Welcome to this Behavior Q&A Ask the Experts session. Next question, we've termed this one, Dog Going Bye Bye Goes Berserk. This question was sent to us from El Paso, Texas. We can meet Max. Max is an eight-year-old cockapoo, and he's gone on car rides ever since he was a puppy because he goes to the dog park almost every day. So for about eight years, he's gotten accustomed to traveling in the car. He's happy to go. There's no problem getting him into the car because he knows he's probably going to the dog park, and he loves that. The problem is that once Max is in the car, he barks frantically, he paces uh, side to side in the back seat, and shows signs of aggression. With his barking, he actually will attack the window, and he'll do that throughout the duration of the car ride all the way to the dog park and back again. It's funny to people, you know, in cars next to him, they think it's funny, this dog goes nuts. So, Dr. C, can we help these people? Do you have any thoughts about Max going berserk? That's a great question, Dr. Berger. The, I would be wondering, of course, being me, of what this dog's physical looks like and all of his other medical parameters, but this is actually a really common behavior in dogs. And if he has any other growling, snarling, snapping, or biting in other situations, um, we would probably want to treat all of those trigger situations. But the thing about the car that's specific for dogs like this is that if they have a goal of chasing things away, or if as they are seeing things go by quickly, they get triggered into moving towards them, they can become frustrated by the window. So one option for these guys getting so intense is that if his goal is to make things go away, and the car is going by, then those things are naturally going away. And what can happen in a sensitive dog, instead of being like, oh, well, those things never stay, so I don't need to be worried about it, some dogs, in fact, many dogs, will learn in their heads that, oh, well, I have to put on this big show in order to keep all those triggers away from my car. And because the triggers stay away from the car, they continue to be reinforced for that behavior, and the behavior can get more intense over time. If this dog is interested in chasing items that move quickly, such as things that are going by outside of the car, then the problem can be that he's so interested in getting to them and yet cannot that what was before real eagerness or energy towards that trigger is now frustration, and frustration can sometimes devolve isn't quite the right word, but become more growling, snarling, snapping, biting, real intensity, because it's frustrating, frankly, and being frustrated is not comfortable. So this may just be about this animal's very normal learning pattern. And um, the great news is I think there's a lot of ways they could potentially ameliorate it. I probably bounce it back to Michelle, though, because I think she's probably got lots of good ideas for it. Uh, yeah, I think um, you're absolutely, that's kind of my same assessment of what might be going on here. Um, there's obviously a very high arousal level with this dog. And um, my my first approach uh, from a training aspect would be to, to bring that arousal level down and start to manage some of that. Um, everything from making the, the walk out to the car a calm event. We often, you know, we want our dogs to be happy about riding in the car and we'll get excited and be like, come on, Fluffy, let's get in the car. and let's, let's go, Max, and do this. And we get excited and they get excited. And then it just kind of snowballs. And so um, I like to, to make that a calm event. Going to the car, you know, it's a nice um, medium pace. You know, I talk to the dog in a calm voice. We get in the car, they get a nice reward maybe for laying down in the car. Um, definitely probably want to consider some sort of car restraint uh, for Max or any dog really uh, just because the dog roaming freely in the car uh, can definitely cause a safety hazard not only for the dog but for the people as well. Um, so putting him you know, in the back seat with a, a, a car harness with a, some sort of restraint or in a crate in the back or depending on the vehicle might be a great first step. Um, and then I would consider limiting some of that visual stimulation that he's seeing out the window. Um, you can get those um, uh, shades like you get for our babies and toddlers to put up on the windows that can cut down on some of that. 
Um, and in addition to that, um, there's a great product out there, uh, the Calming Cap. Um, I think it's now by um, Thundershirt makes it and maybe somebody else, but it's a great product. It, it looks, um, it's in this picture on the slide here in the middle there, and it, it looks like it like completely blinds them, but it doesn't. It's kind of like looking at a screen door at dusk. So it limits the visual stimulation, but doesn't cut it out completely so they don't get that kind of panic that can't see what's happening feeling. Um, in addition, some sort of uh, wrap for anxiety or uh, phobias or something like that could be a helpful calming aid in this situation. Um, I've even gone so far as to use a remote uh, device like the treat and train to actually put in the back seat of the car so I can um, reinforce them while I'm driving with the remote. I don't have to actually be physically doing it with my hands or my treats. Um, so I can reinforce them as they um, display calm behavior while we're going down the road. Of course, you want to consider, you know, if your dog eats okay in the car or if he possibly gets nauseous or something, that might not be the, the best approach. But um, those are some of the things I'd start with to kind of bring that arousal level down. Because if he's that hyped up, a, a lot of learning that might have already taken place, it, it's not currently happening because he's so aroused. So we want to calm him down and, and get him into a state where um, he's just much, much happier um, and much safer uh, for everybody in the car. These are actually places where supplements can be helpful too. Like, although it's not really a traditional su supplement, like pheromone therapy, like Adaptal, um, the spray can be used here. Lavender essential oils are researched for agitation in the car. So you could use those. Um, some of the supplements like Soliquin or even Zentral might be a good option. It works in around 60 minutes. So there's lots of really great things that you could do in combination with management to help this dog learn new ways to respond in the car. Of course, if we were going to really treat this dog, we would have to know exactly what nuts meant, you know, like exactly what is that behavior. But just sort of cocktail party level conversation, I think these are some things that could be really helpful. Great advice. Thank you, Dr. and Michelle.